Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Recently, we did an episode on our truck bed divider, as well as ratchet strap organization. And some of you noticed that we're using carabiners and you are curious about how they're rated and what these numbers mean and all that. And are these any good? Well, stay tuned and I'll demystify these great little devices. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Thanks for joining me in this episode where we're gonna demystify these carabiners. Now, before we get into just showing you how to make use of these and what makes a legit carabiner versus a convenience or you know an organizational tool, I'd like to ask you a favor. If you find this video to be helpful, won't you like it? And better yet, please subscribe to our channel. And when you do, ring the bell because you'll be notified approximately every Friday along with some special episodes coming up on Tuesdays of great new content about truck life in the shop, around the garden, and in the kitchen. All right, let's get to it. Well, what you're looking at here is an actual carabiner. And I use these to actually help tie down uh, loads uh, to affix ratchet strap hooks to and actually is an organizational tool in the back of the bed of the truck here. And uh, some of you wrote in and said, what's the difference or can you tell the difference between these kind of things? You know, what is this a real carabiner? What's it do, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let's cut to the chase very quickly. This is not a real carabiner. It's kind of carabiner-esque, kind of like a carabiner. It looks like one and you could call it that, but it does not serve the full function of what one of these real, the genuine deal does. Now, let's notice a couple things on these, these the construction of these. First, they're very lightweight. And if you look here, it says right away, safe working load, 150 pounds. That's not very much. And notice they call it a working load. It's not a life load, like where a person's life depends on it. And then if you look on the back side, it also says, not for climbing. So what are these good for? They're more like for convenience to organize a set of wrenches or perhaps to put on some small items like key rings or to use uh, to put your lip balm or something on the back of your backpack. But as far as actual hardworking uh, tools, these are not to be used for that. Now, there's another thing I wanna point out. These are very lightweight and while they have what's called a gate on a carabiner, just like the genuine article does. If you look close, there are pins that are the hinge points. And those are the weakest part of the entire uh, device. So if you put a heavy load or a snap load where all of a sudden something is jolting on that, where these are gonna fail first is right at those little axle pins. Right there, you've got a, a notch that allows that pin to connect on that side, but it's pivoting on that side. That's the weakest point on these carabiner-like devices. So do not ever count on these for any heavy loads, for tying down strong uh, loads with them, or certainly where someone's life depends on it. Don't even think about it. So that brings us to the real article. So here you have a genuine carabiner. Now, a couple things that you would notice right away would tell you I'm working with the real thing is it has on it a KN rating, and that stands for kilonewton. If you have a carabiner and it does not have a KN rating, you're not using a real deal. So what is a kilonewton? Well, I'm gonna define it with something that probably even sounds more confusing, and that is it's a force of gravity rating. Huh? Well. Would you agree that if I hang something on here and it's static, it's just hanging there, that's a different thing than if you get a shock load that does that? So a kilonewton measures when mass is accelerated like a falling body, someone who is actually climbing up the face of rock and they have a slip and they fall and all of a sudden these devices catch. Well, everything in climbing and harnesses and all that is designed to distribute shock loads, whether it is the lines, the carabiners, the harnesses, the webbing, strapping, all of that. So everything that is done for a true carabiner has to be rated in kilonewtons. And so that's what's going on. If you notice this one, this is rated at 25. Now, here's a rough equivalency. 
Each kilonewton uh, equals about 225 pounds of static weight. I mean, weight at rest, okay? So if you take 25 and you multiply it towards 225, you're going to have north of 5,600 pounds that this device can hold. Uh, and that means that if you had a 2,000 pound weight and there was some kind of bounce in it, this would probably hold together. Uh, so you want a large rating against whatever load you're putting on it. A couple other things that would happen then. If you notice, as you look close at that rating, notice some of the arrows on it. And it has an arrow going up and down and says it's rated at eight kilonewtons. That means if the load was going sideways like that, this would be rated at eight. And if the gate, which is this device, if I unscrew that and the gate was open or not attached, and the load was going this way or some other way, it's rated to hold seven kilonewtons, which is about 1,500 pounds or so. And we'll give you some of those ratings in kilos as well in the description below for our international friends. So that tells you a little bit about how that works. Now, another thing that's really important to notice is the shape of a carabiner. This is called a D-shape. There are pear-shaped or oblongs for different uh, reasons or different uh, purposes. So notice right here, first of all, that these are designed to close the gate on. This pivots, but then this rolls up. And uh, my friend behind the camera, Rob, who had some experience of this, would say when they were teaching kids how to repel, there was what was called a squeeze test. So before you released one and transferred low to another, you would have to move the carabiner uh, from position one, move it over to the other one, close it, rotate it, and do a squeeze test to make sure everything was secure before you undid the first one. So that's what all this is meant to be. This really strengthens it when the gate is closed. Notice the shape is also designed to get the load to be as close as possible to the spine. The spine is the strongest structure, and that's why you can see this huge rating of 25 versus 8 and 7 when it's sideways on this way, putting force on the pin again versus the spine, or the gate is open. So these are some great things to be aware of. Now I want to show you something over here. What we have here is I've just put a bungee cord load against this carabiner, and notice that because of the way the shape is, the carabiner is always going to rotate to make sure the load or the tension is as close as possible to the spine. Even if I were to rotate this and push that up, it's going to snap back down. And if I try to rotate it this way, you know, it's still going to always try to, to return back to that place right there where the spine is carrying the load. Now for larger pear shape or oblong ones where they're trying to do multiple straps away to lift cargo loads or a, um, a, um, a carrier for someone they're rescuing off the mountain, these things are going to really be beefed up to distribute the load correctly. So they've already designed that in. So that's why you want to make sure you've got the right carabiner. If you're using anything like this to strap down loads, Make sure it's super heavy duty like this for convenience and that the gate is closed and screwed shut. If you found this video to be helpful, please like it and make sure that you do subscribe. If you've got some insights you'd like to offer, be sure to do so. And one other resource I wanna tell you about, I have provided for you in the description below a link to a great place about carabiners. It's actually a Canadian resource related to search and rescue and all about carabiners, how it's calculated, the shape of them and so forth. It'll give you a lot more detail than I gave you. Well, thank you for joining us. Make sure you check out our new website at dirtfarmerj.com and you can connect with us there as well. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer J from dirtfarmerj.com.